This is going to take a preview of the Ryanet brush pack with over 800 custom developed brushes for Corel Draw, all in vector and a very different assortment of types of brushes based on different styles of design work that we want to be able to set up very easily and very quickly in Corel Draw for our t shirt design, signs, etc. Go to my artistic media tool. I'll come over here to my browse, and we've got here brush pack set up on our desktop. Once we expand that, we'll see a number of different brushes open up here. And you can see that if we go ahead and scroll over here just a bit, we've got abstract shape, particles, ancient text, arrow flow, banners. And if you see a little arrow next to a folder, you can left click on that and expand. We've got clean banners, flat banners, hand drawn banners, barbed wire, beveled shapes, chains, chiseled stone, tribal chiseled stone tribal cracks crest destroyed brushes destroyed watercolor diamonds we've got feathers wings we've got black chopped graphic hand drawn hand drawn graphic wing starts different looks for the feathers for different types of feather designs based on what's popular in fashion design right now flames a huge assortment of flames for different types of flame graphics and flame effects with your designs We've got grunge strokes, ink effects, inky drops, lightning, graphic lightning bolts, and we've also got realistic lightning. We've got linear, which is lines. We've got rips and tears, shaped nibs, sharp bevels, sharp crack shapes, sharp shapes, soft airbrush. We've got splats, heavy splats and light splats for adding splat grunge to your design. Squared tails for adding tails, your sports tails. Thorns, tribal, tri lines, we've got urban arrows, and we've got warped abstract with over 800 different brushes set up here. And we'll go ahead and go through these. I want to start out here at the beginning with the abstract shape particles. And we'll take a look at some of these different brushes here. So I'm going to select OK there. What I want to do is go ahead and zoom out here. I'm going to come up here to my folder, and I'm just going to go, I want to go to my list, not my folder, right here. I'll just go ahead and click on one or two of these and we'll take a look at how they work. Left click and I'll just create a stroke here and I'm going to change the size of that. And that creates a very different looking effect that you can add to the backgrounds or to your designs. I'll go ahead and duplicate this here. And I want to right click and order bring this to the front of the page. Go into a different layer, that's fine. But you can see you can take these different shape effects and apply them to designs very differently. And if I don't like what I see with this particular one, I can go back to my brush tool here and take a look at some of the other ones that I've got available here. And unfortunately, I had the skull um, selected there, so that's going to apply that particular brush to every vector segment on my skull. And that's why, as you can see there, you want to make sure you don't have anything selected when you change your brushes or make sure you've got actually a brush selected. Go ahead and click there and you can see a different look being created there and bring that in that way. And then I could come over here, double click and change this brush strokes properties a little bit. Have it flow with what's already going on there and start to add a really cool background effect for this design or some cool elements to this design. Go ahead and click off here. That's our abstract background elements, our abstract shape particles. Next thing we've got is ancient text. Very cool to work with here. Just add some ancient text like you see in your fashion designs right there to your graphics. Let's say you wanted to add some ancient text flowing around the top of the head of this particular design. Just go ahead and flow that right in there and you've got ancient text set up to flow with your design. We see a lot of that with our Affliction MMA type designs, the ancient text. After ancient text, we have arrow flows. We saw some of that earlier. Go ahead and select one of these here and just create a little arrow brush here. And you can see we can create some different looks and effects very easily and very quickly with the arrow flows. Go ahead and hit Control Z. After arrow flows, we have banners. And here we've got clean banners, which are basically simple banners. And the great part about working with banners is you can very easily add nice banner effects to your designs with the banner shapes. As you can see here, this is a clean banner. And that shape really isn't working because this node that's going on here is just a little bit too crunched up. And you can see now that destroyed even a little bit more, but if we go ahead and click off here, now you can see everything seems to flow just fine. And once again, you've got to pay attention how your nodes and your line segments flow. And if you see a problem, for example, right there, Corel's having an issue rendering that, but if you change what's going on with the nodes, 
typically that'll bring it back and you can see we brought that back right there and I'm going to bring this over here and just change the shape like that a little bit just set this up as a standard banner shape have it arched up let's say like here and it could be going across the top of the skull and the great part about these banners is you got really good control over what goes on with these we'll bring this skull down here right there we'll center that up and then we can go ahead and skew this just a little bit just to balance it up a bit click one more time left click here and bring the skew up and then once I've set up the banners this is your clean banners flat banners and then we want to go ahead we'll open up again here we'll take a look at our flat banners that was clean clean banners we'll go to flat banners different look here just kind of typical banners there and then of course we've got our hand-drawn banners and we'll go ahead and select a hand-drawn banner here and take a look at one of those and these have the hand-drawn look associated with them kind of edgy kind of look we see in our fashion designs but you know once you've got one of these banners set up it's amazing what you can do with them because I can just sit here and just make all these different banner shapes and banner flows very easily working with the brushes very different then working with static banners, you can see very quickly I created those different shapes. You can see how you can incorporate banners very quickly and easily customized to your design with the flow of brushes as opposed to working with static art. Go ahead and delete these three. And we'll go back to our artistic media tool and zoom in here. And after banners, we have barbed wire, one of my personal favorites. And you can take that barbed wire and create some cool effects with it. We'll come up here. Just grab one of these brush strokes of barbed wire and you'll see how that applies right there and I can start to add some really cool barbed wire effect to my design. Now that's a little bit too small. probably want something like right about there. And I can shape and flow this into my design any way that I want. For instance, if I wanted to put some barbed wire around the head of my skull here, all I could do is just take a circle and expand it around the outside of my design. Go ahead and convert that to curves. I'll come down here and let's say we break this apart. So I'll double right click here and I'll select break apart. Do the same thing here. Break apart. Take my object, right click, break curve apart. Got that set up that way. Let's say I want to just have like a barbed wire crest going in here. I could bring this node down here and shape it up this way. Now with my line segment selected, if I go and select one of my barbed wires here, you can see that's applied to my design. And I can double click on that and tweak that. Bring that over here this way, balance that out and do the same here, bring this in that way just a bit and tilt this off that way. And now I've got this set up going around my skull or I could go ahead and flow it like I did with the other and have a nice barbed wire effect going on around the outside of my skull with the barbed wire brushes. These brushes are very popular. I use them quite frequently. Order to back of page. OK. And then I could go and do some more different things with the barbed wire type brushes. So that's our barbed wire. Well, let me see here. We'll go after the barbed wire. We've got our beveled shapes. Very cool. Select OK on those. Come up in here. I want to click off and grab some beveled shape here. I'll go ahead and work with this one here for now left click here and start to create some different look that's going on here almost like some wings working with a bevel shape and you can see how cool that looks creating a wing type design that's coming off of these beveled shapes very easily and very quickly go ahead and select all of that and I'll send that order to back of page select OK and I could bring that over and duplicate that mirror that over here and you said I want to click off make sure that's not selected bring this over here, duplicate that, mirror it. I went vertical instead of horizontal. And move that over and kind of center it off the other side of the skull. Starting to get a really cool look there with the skull and the beveled shapes as you can see there. After our beveled shapes, I'm going to go ahead and move this down here. And I want to make sure I get everything selected there. Lasso everything and we'll move this off to one side and we'll zoom back in here. After our beveled shape, you can see there's just a huge library of brushes. The best thing to do is just spend a little time going through these, getting familiar with them. We've got chains. I'll select OK. If I want to bring some chain look around my design here, say around the bottom, I've got the barbed wire on the top. Let's say I want to bring some chain down here around the bottom. I can do that. Come in here, click on some different chain effects. You can see that's too big, but I'll go ahead and resize that and bring that up in size. 
something like that right there and I can start to add a chain look or chain effect with my chain graphics to my general design. We'll go ahead and bring that up in size a little bit. I want to bring that down just a bit, but that's some chain brushes. Next, after chains, we have chiseled tribal stone. I'll select OK. This is a, has like a stone look to it, chiseled stone. And I'll go ahead and go with, let's say, something like this brush right here. And we'll just lay this down. I'm going to need to change the size of that a little bit. And bring that up in size just a bit. I'm going to delete that and click here on this one. And let's see what we get there. And you can see this is set up like chiseled stone look. What I want to do is bring that down in size and make it a little bit smaller. And you can see we can create some really off the wall chiseled stone looks. Then we might set set up in the back of a t-shirt design as a background element or something like that. And I can go ahead and change this to some different looks here like this one here. And all set up to get different types of looks with the chiseled stone type look that we see a lot of this on your MMA t-shirts and things like that. And working our way down through, the next thing we've got is cracks. Go ahead, select OK. Got some really cool crack brushes here. If you want to add some distressed grunge type, type looks to your design with cracks, and we'll fill those with white. I'm just clicking on a white color chip over there in my color palette. But you can see here's these crack brushes. They can do all kinds of distress, grunge, and artistic cracks effects with. And there's about 10 or 15 of these also. After cracks, we have crests. Really cool brushes for creating crest style designs. We'll go ahead and zoom out. Zoom back in here, and I'll just go ahead and create a crack brush here. And then I'll go ahead and convert this to a crest. And you'll see that I can create, this is a flame crest right here, very cool. That I can create some very different type crest graphics very easily with these brushes and just go ahead and take this right click one time duplicate and mirror holding down control to constrain that mirroring and you can see instantaneously I'm able to set up a crest look and I can also adjust that very easily working with my artistic media tool and change the width and the size and have a lot more control over this crest as opposed to a static art type crest go ahead and select both of these and delete these go ahead and back to my artistic media tool. After crest here we've got destroyed brushes and these are some destroyed artistic grunge type brushes and you can see they've got a real edgy type look with them and you can do a bunch of different things with these also and we'll see do some work with these also in the tutorial session to see how they work. After that we've got what is our destroyed watercolor. These are color brushes that have some different color properties associated with them and you can change the color of these also just left click in your color palette and they've got a watercolor look to them and they're very cool for creating splashy watercolor type looks after destroyed watercolor we have diamonds which are another shape flow brush we'll go ahead and create a stroke there and then come in here to our diamonds we'll go ahead and change the size of that you can see these are different shape flows based on diamond shapes and you can also use these for, di for background elements and creating splashes of shapes across your designs. After the diamonds we have feathered wings, very powerful set. I'll go to the hand-drawn graphic here. We saw this before. Actually I'll go to hand-drawn here and you can take these and literally instantaneously create all kinds of wing and feather looks. And we'll just come in here and start drawing a feather here and then we'll come down here and select one of our hand-drawn feathers. Perhaps that one right there and you can see where I could just start to lay out a very realistic hand-drawn feather look very easily and very quickly working with these feather brushes. And I might want to come up through here with that and then bring another one up this way. And you can just see how easy it is to create these looks that, you know, normally you'd spend hours hand drawing custom feathers, but now with these brushes, what you can do is create this look almost instantaneously and very easily with the full control and flexibility that you have with the brushes. That's our feathers. After feathers, we have flames. Great set of brushes here also. I'll come down here into styled black and white, select OK, create a stroke here, come up here and we'll grab a flame brush and you can see we get some really cool looks there with those. We've also got some flame brushes set up as color and we go into there and you can see that we got a really cool looking realistic red and yellow flame brush that we can just create all kinds of cool flame effects 
for all kinds of different types of designs. And then we've got what we call transparent flames, which are right here. And if I click on one of these, these are transparent. If I come up here and click one of these, they've got a nice transparency with them. I can click on these and change the color of them. Let's say I wanted to make this look realistic like that, but I wanted the soft edge of a flame. I could hit Control-C, Control-V, paste that in, paste that in again, take that top one, hit yellow, and what am I copying here? I want to hit Control-Z, I want to hit Control-C, copy that, change that to a red, Control-V, bring that yellow in on top by pasting it in, you can see the type of look I start to get with these nice transparent edged flames. We've also got in the flames what are our simple flame shapes, and then we've got complex flame shapes. I'll go up here in the complex flame shapes. We use these to create more of a realistic looking flame, not type of graphic styled flame, but more of a realistic type looking flame. And I'll bring this up this way, come in here and we'll click on some of these. And you can see this has got a little bit more detail, a little bit more flow and functionality in them. Change the size of this just a bit. And these aren't just simple graphic flames, but we can actually bring these and create really cool flame looks with these also. And these brushes are really set up to have more of a realistic look or a little bit more strength than the flames you've got with the styled flames, which are kind of your graphic flames, and these are a little bit more realistic, a little bit more detailed. We call these complex flames. And once again, you've got the same setup here where we've got the color also. We'll click on that. Click on that, and we'll change that to a colored flame, as you can see there or here, and you can create some really different type of flame looks very quickly and very easily with these brushes, as you can see here. So you can imagine while I'm going through these different types of brushes, there's over 800 of them, all kinds of different elements that you can use as brushes for your design work and draw, but there's just a huge assortment in here. And I want to go ahead and delete all of this here just so it's not taking up resources on my system. After the flames, we've got, we'll go back to the artistic media tool, flames, we've got grunge strokes and these are a whole bunch of different grunge strokes that you can work with to create grunge effects on your designs as you can see there after grunge strokes we have ink effects and I'll select OK and these are some different inking type strokes and we'll come up here and select one of those that's kind of a splattered ink look this is kind of an inked pen look and different inking looks to give your inking graphic work different looks with ink style strokes. I'm going to hit control Z here. After inking we have ink effects. We've got ink drops which are kind of like ink splatters. Different brushes set up with that effect that you can use to add effects to the backgrounds and to your graphics. After inky drops we have lightning. Very cool brushes here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at realistic lightning. So I'm going to go ahead and open realistic lightning and we'll take a look and see how that would work. I'm going to set up a black rectangle here because I want you to see this realistic lightning. Very cool brushes. I'm going to come down in here. I'm going to select this one here, I guess. And I just applied that to the rectangle. I don't want to do that. Hit Control Z and I'm going to create a lightning bolt strike here. Now this is set up as black, but you'll notice when I click this and change it to a white and then bring it over a black background, you can see we've got a very realistic lightning effect or look going on there. And then we can bring in even more lightning strokes down through here very easily and very quickly like that and create some really off the wall looks with these lightning bolts. Several different types of lightning bolts in here that you can use to create different looks with the lightning. I can change that. That's just a single stroke right there. Something like this here as you can see and more lightning added to that. And we'll be doing some work with these in the tutorial sessions most likely also. So that's our lightning. I'll go ahead and delete these. And I know this is taking quite a time to get through these, but as I said, there's over 800 brushes here. Just an incredible supply of brushes that you can work with to create totally original design work. We've got linear here. We've got ripped tears. Linear is some pretty basic shapes here. We'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of linear brushes. And left click and go this way. And they're just different line effects that you can create different looks with and draw different effects for your graphics. After linear we've got rips and tears and these brushes you can use to create the look of a garment being ripped or torn and you can see how that works right there. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger actually went smaller instead of bigger there 
but you can see that looks like somebody scratched or tore a met met metallic surface out there. We've got a couple of different ones in here with different looks based on the type of rip or torn look you'd want to add to your graphic. After rips and tears, we have shape nibs, which these are different nibs for doing different shaping or design work based on graphic illustration and draw. And you can see that we've got some different shapes with these nibs. And you want to go through these. I use these when I'm adding some effects or drawing things and draw. Go ahead and change this. Bring this down just a little bit in size. Change my nib to say something like this teardrop here and then I'll just start drawing here. You can see you get a different ink drawing type shape with these nibs which is what they're really set up for. I'm going to hit control Z. After that we've got, let's see, after the nibs we've got shaped nibs, we've got shape sharp bevels and these are some really cool shapes that you can work with similar to the other bevels that were out there. These sharp bevels carry very sharp edges on them and they've got a really cool look and I want to go ahead and change this and you can do some really cool things with them. For instance, you can see building this off of here, if I wanted to use this type of effect with my skull, I could start to create some really off the wall effects or this could be a sports ball or just about any other type of object but you can see that, I'll bring that down in size, these particular brushes you can use to add some really cool elements and factors to your designs and I'll go ahead and click off here and go back to my artistic media tool and I could start creating something like that bring this down in size create another one here and I've just got this whole cool beveled graphic look order and to front of page right there and you can see I just start to build a really cool beveled look so there's just so many brushes in here it's incredible all set up to help you create the looks that are really popular in the market very easily with the flexibility of brushes after this particular brush, we've got shapes, we've got sharp bevels, we've got sharp cracked shapes. I'm going to come up here and grab one of these. And these are really cool too. These have a cracked effect already built into the shape. So they're kind of distressed and grunged already with cracks. So you can create some really cool looks with these, something like this here. And bring that off of that skull. And then you might want to do the same thing over here on this side and bring another one up that way and just start to create a really cool look with some distress and grunge already incorporated into it with those shapes order and to back of page select OK totally different look going on there and we'll go ahead and reduce that in size just a little bit and you can see we could do some work with that and create a really nice effect with that we'll go ahead and duplicate this over here mirror that hold control to constrain our mirroring and as you can see different look going on with those sharp cracked shapes next set of brushes is our sharp shapes which is just solid sharp shapes and you can use these to create different linear looks as you can see here something with a wings type look here coming out of there use these quite frequently for different things some different looks here with these and you can create some really cool different effects for your designs with these also. Next thing I want to look at after that is we'll take a look at soft airbrush. Powerful brushes here. You can create some really cool stuff with these. Soft airbrush, we've got that selected. Come up in here and you'll notice as I click off here I've got like a soft airbrush look that I can change the color of as you can see there. Now we've got some in here that have different looks and different effects with them as you can see when I click that and fill that with a yellow or a blue I've got that effect going on I'm going to put some color down behind that and make that black and you can see the effect that we're getting there make this like a gray for now or perhaps a green or a red go ahead and click on a couple different of these just so you can see how they work use these a lot for different effects and different looks and I just applied that to the rectangle I didn't want to do that I want to apply that to the brush for instance this brush here and I can create some really cool flame type looks with this just coming up in here and changing these into yellow as you can see there and you just start to get a really off the wall soft look with transparent transparency incorporated into the brush a real flamey type look that sets that up after the soft airbrush we have splats heavy splats and light splats go ahead and take a look at some splat brushes here we can use these to add splat effects to our graphics and our designs. Go ahead and 
lasso this stuff and delete it here. Zoom back in on the skull and we'll take a look at our splats here. I'm going to look at some different strokes of splats here. You can see, look at those splats just set up so you can create some splat effects to drop into the backgrounds of your designs or your graphics, however you want to set them up. Right click, order to back of page, OK, and now you can see I got a nice cool splat effect in the background. Duplicate that over here off to one side. We'll mirror that also and then move that over here. Order and to back of page. And there's our splat effect brushes. After splats we have squared, which these are some different square type effects. Pattern set up. You can use these for racing designs and things like that. Square patterns built out for different looks and different racing effects and things like that. After squared we have what is our tails. And these we can use to quickly create sport tail designs. And I'll come back in here and we'll just click on a tail here. And you can see that's a tail and I could just add my text and set that tail up as a tail design to go with a sports tail design. After tails we have thorns. We can create some really cool thorn effects with these. Let's say I wanted to bring some thorns into this design here. Come up in here and I'll grab a thorn brush and just pull some thorns down in here. Change the size of these. Bring these down. Now I can't really see these, these very, well, very well in my splats, but I can change that to white. Go to my object docker, excuse me, my properties docker is what I want here. That's not object properties here. Go to a pen, give that a pen behind fill. Give that more than that. Let's give that like 12 points. Nice flame. That's flame but thorns effect that I could go ahead and draw into that graphic. And you can see how working with these different brushes, I'm really starting to build something even with this skull with the thorns being built here and the splats very easily. That's really the beautiful part about these brushes. It's just so easy to create off the wall designs on the fly because you can work so creatively and so flexibly with these brushes. I mean, I got these thorns going on here on the sides. I got the splats behind that. And I've got these objects coming up in wings and here we are just experimenting with brushes and we've got a really off the wall type of look we've created just playing with the different brushes that are in the brush pack. And looking at this, I can come up here and probably change the size of that a little bit. Bring that down there just a bit. I might want to actually duplicate that. Now we're going somewhere with this design, working our way through the brushes. Duplicate that, rotate it, something like that and then go ahead and change the shape of it just a little bit. Bring that right up into here, something like that there, and then delete this node here, take this node here, move it over that way, and arch this down this way, bring this up that way. Totally different look going on here. Bring this in behind the skull, rotate it out that way. Really different look, but you can see how very quickly working through order and to back of page, OK, and then I might want to take this one, double click, and just bring that out a little bit. And take this one again here, and bring it down so these aren't overlapping. With that look there, we're starting to get a really different look. But you can see, building off all these different brush strokes, how quickly I can go through all these different things and start end up with some really cool looks and effects. After our thorns, we have, let me see here, we'll go ahead and roll this out here. After thorns, we have tribal which is our tribal brushes, and I'll go ahead and delete these two here. I want to delete everything, just the two that were there. And we'll take a look at our tribal brushes. And my tribal brushes are here selected. And let's say I want to create some cool shapes with tribal here. I might want to work with something like, let's say, this here. And bring some tribal look up off here, off the top. And as you can see, that's a different tribal look there. Now, if I want to go the other way, I can come off the top and come down and get a different shape there. I can change that tribal to, say, something like this here, which is an entirely different tribal brush or stroke, and start to get a totally different look going on with my design. Come back up here again, take a look at something like this. Very different tribal look there, tribal brush. Bring that up in size there. I kind of like that brush. Go ahead, I'll go ahead and delete that, grab that brush, bring that off down here off one side and then come up along the side here 
I can see I'm getting a different look with that travel brush. I want to go ahead and reduce what's going on with these nodes here and what's going on here. Make sure that everything's kind of flowing together. This is actually there and that can come up this way here. Really different travel look going on with that particular brush there. Go ahead and bring this over here and mirror that. Once again, brush is built off each side creating the elements of the design with the tribal brushes there. After tribal, we have, let me see here, we've got tri lines, which are a different brush also. And these are just set up as line segments, different ways that you can create different looks and effects with. Similar to that right there. After tri line, we have Urban Arrows, which you've got a whole bunch of Urban Arrow brushes here. I'll go ahead and delete this here, delete that there, delete this, delete that. And let's say you want to bring some arrows down off the side of this. Go into my Urban Arrow brushes, grab a different Urban Arrow, left click here, pull down. Let's say you want to have an arrow coming down off the side of the skull. There we got some Urban Arrows set up coming off into our design. These Urban Arrows are very popular with a lot of the modern stuff that we're seeing going on t-shirt design today. And I could bring that up here and tuck that in behind my thorns, maybe rotate that just a little bit. Go ahead and duplicate that and mirror that on my design. And now I've got this whole kind of urban arrow look mixed in with my thorns and my splats. After urban arrows, we have warped abstract. Very cool set of brushes here. I like to work with these a lot. And warped abstract is really like half tone and different warp effects, but I'll grab a different brush here. I think I'll go with something like this one here. Let's say you want to put some cool halftone abstract effects to our design. I can go ahead and paint that in there. We'll fill that with like a light gray color. And I'll go ahead and double click on that and adjust my nodes here. I know I got a node over here that seems to be not flowing with that brush very well. But totally off the wall effect here going on with the halftones. And I could make that a white and knock it out from the rest of my design. Hit Control Z. I'm going to bring this off to the center down here. Kind of have it flow with what's going on with the arrows to create a different look with the flow here coming down along with the arrows. Like that right there. We could fill that with a white and then we could simply take that and let's say we want to duplicate that. Now I got the line and not the graphic. I want to get the line so I'll click on that get the graphic duplicate that, offset it just a bit from the white, and then fill it with a gray. And I start to create a really off-the-wall effect with that. So that's just a tour of our brushes. And what I'll do is we'll get into our design sessions next, and we'll start actually working and designing with the various brushes directly in Corel Draw. I know that we've gone through a lot here in this tutorial, but there's well over 800 brushes in this brush pack. So there's just an insane amount of brushes that you can work with to do all kinds of different design looks and effects.